Hi, and welcome back to Calorie Lab Online Science and Secrets. This is lesson two. I've kept for you the board from lesson one, just so we can just refresh before we continue on where we got to last time. So we were speaking about fascia, the connective tissue in the body. We were saying that within our body, our muscles and ligaments join together to make lines of pull through the body. So the tendons here on the front or on the back surface of the foot attach into tibialis anterior. For example, in the case of the front line, they attach into rec fem. Rec fem attaches onto the pelvis and pulls down on the pelvis. Attaching onto the top of the pelvis, we have rectus abdominis, that attaches onto the sternalis muscle and that attaches up and onto the side of the head behind the ear of the mastoid process. So tension will run all the way up through the body on that front line. And then we have the back line, which is running from the back of the foot all the way up, all the way up to the top of the head, attaching over the top and onto the frontal bone. And the third line that we discussed in the last session was the deep front line, which I like to think of as an inner chicken. Uh, you, you don't see it maybe so much in this drawing, although I can see a bit of a chicken there. But when this, uh, when this drawing, uh, or when you see rather, uh, a dissection, and you can type into to Google if you wish, deep front line, Myers, so M-Y-E-R-S, Myers, dissection, and you will come across a dissection video where they actually cut away this line, which is a bit disgusting, obviously, but it's very interesting to see it. And what you'll see is basically um, something that looks a bit like a chicken. And that is inside us, going through our pelvis, so within the pelvis, and inside the rib cage. So this is our muscular core, and these three lines work together to maintain us upright and to keep our position in the sagittal plane, so from forward and backwards. Now, before going into detail, into more detail on these other lines, which I would like us to understand, because there are, in fact, 12 lines in the body. Before doing that, I just want to step back a bit and try to understand why it is that we have this connective tissue. What does it do? So, what is the function of fascia? In order to understand this, I'd like us to think of a tangerine. If you wish, you can pause the video and go and take from your kitchen a citrus fruit. That might help you to understand this a little more. Okay, so now maybe you have your citrus fruit. If not, you can imagine one. So let's say we have a tangerine. We take away the outside skin, we peel off the skin, and underneath we're left with the fruit, divided into different sections, held together by the white pith. Now, this white pith is basically the fascia of the fruit, in so much as it performs within the fruit the same functions as fascia performs within our bodies. Now, what do I mean by that? The first and most obvious thing is that it gives segmentalization. Without the pith, there would simply be one big uh, fruit. Whereas what the pith does, it divides it into different sections or segments, and it provides, therefore, segmentalization. Now, what we can say that, instead, we can use the word structure, because in, what the fascia does in our body is it provides structure. It holds all of the different parts of the body in position. For example, you can imagine some wax, and if you took Every muscle, every bone, every ligament, every tendon, every structure, every organ inside the body, and you dipped it in the wax, and then you held it next to the other structure that it was adjacent to in the body, and allowed that wax just to seal onto the other structure, so they were held now together. In that sense, that is what our fascia is doing. It's joining together and connecting all of the different structures. Now, the easiest way to picture it is to think of a spider's web. But instead of being two-dimensional, and those of you living in Australia will perhaps be able to think of a funnel web spider to understand this, because the fascia in our body is a three-dimensional spider's web. It reaches out into every nook and cranny, every corner, every single part of the body, and as it does so, it reaches out with a, with a strand, which is a bit like a bit like um, sticky and a bit like snot, 
uh, I hate to use that analogy, my sister particularly doesn't like it. But if you take uh, snot and you, you were to play with it, you can stretch it out or you can allow it to sh become again short and thicker. As you stretch it out, it becomes thinner. So in that sense, we can think that this spider's web of fascia consists of large trunks, thick pieces, thick strands. And when those strands are opened out, when they are stretched through prolonged stretching, like we have in calorie, in the bodywork and also in the exercise, then as you stretch apart those thick branches and they divide up into smaller branches or, or thick trunks divided into smaller branches, there we have the opening out of the fascia. Now when you have a problem in the body, let's say um, in the case of my shoulder, there's a, a bit of a closing down here at the moment because I, I was injured for a long time and, and not able to train and I was spending quite a lot of time working in, in uh, writing and in doing so sitting at the uh, desk a lot and I got some shortening here in the front and some weakening in the back. So my shoulder has slightly come forward on this side. Now I'm working on this using the ground exercises as we are going through in the videos. But until the shoulder corrects itself, what we would have here if we looked at a microscope, sorry, through a microscope, we would see that the fascia in the front area of the arm here, the fascia that's joining my pec minor into the muscle of the arm has shortened. And if we'd look inside with the microscope, we would see that those branches have joined together to make thick trunks and it's very rigid and not opened out properly like it is on the other side. What that means is that tension held in that area will become fixed in that area. And the longer I don't work on it to try to open it out, whether that's through stretching the arm or whether that's through body work on the arm to open and release this area, as long as I don't do those things, as long as I allow the problem to sit and rest in the body, it will become a fixed and lodged pattern in the body. Now, what do I mean by that? So, within this structure, within this three-dimensional spider's web, there is a, an electrical activity. There is electrical electricity moving through this web. When we look at the different um, significant points within this web, and there are 108 of these points, and for those of you familiar with Vedic astrology, mathematics, or other Vedic studies, you will know this number very well. Within this fascial web, there are 108 points where the electrical activity is particularly significant. Now what that means is, if we were to press on that point, or indeed strike that point, as we do in the martial art of calorie, we would be able to affect the way in which electricity was flowing through that area. So in the case of injury or derangement, as I like to call the situation in my shoulder, or perhaps in, in a part of your body where you have a problem, where there is that derangement, these, these branches of fascia, they close down. They don't allow the proper movement of tension through the area, but at the same time, they impede the way in which electricity goes through the area. And if that, correct, if that derangement is not corrected quickly, after the problem arises in the body, it will become a fixed pattern and the electricity will start to flow in a new way through that area. Just as in the brain, we can mutate the brain cells. Recent science over the last five, 10 years has shown us that the way in which we think will form, will change the way our brain is working. So we can physically mutate the way our brain is working. We can change the way in which or the, the, um, the responses that we have. The responses that we have over time leave a pattern in the brain. So if we always choose anger as a response to a situation, the brain actually requires less stimulation to get angry. It becomes easier to get angry. Now that of course could be the same for empathy or love, tolerance, any positive, if you like, uh, emotional response. So the brain is a plastic structure which is able to be changed. In the same way, your fascial web, this web that goes all the way through the body, holding on to all the structures, keeping everything in the right place, this web can also change. 
it's also plastic in that sense. But forgive me, there's a large truck coming up the hill, so it's going to get a bit noisy. So the first attribute, the first quality, the first function of the fascia is to provide structure. And it does that through reaching out with this three-dimensional spider's web, wrapping around every structure in the body and joining on to the next one. The second thing that fascia provides is lubrication. Let's just let the truck go past. So, if you still have your orange in front of you, I'd like you to just try to move it a little bit like this and see what happens. Now, I'm pretty sure it won't break open and all the juice run out onto, onto the floor. Because what the pith, and the pith is our fascia, if you like, what the pith allows is for those different segments to move against each other. It allows a certain amount of lubrication. And the same is true for us in the human body. The example we can use is when we lift the arm up like this, what is actually happening? If this was my rib cage here from the back, and this is my scapula, my shoulder blade here, sat on top. When I lift my arm up and down, it goes through a process or a movement defined or what we call scaption, scapula, flexion, if you like, or scap scaption is the proper word. So as the scap scapula moves up and down, it is free to move because of the fascia in between the scapula and the ribcage. The, scap the fascia allows lubrication. Now, the degree to which that lubrication is possible depends on the health of the fascia. And one of the problems that we can get with the fascia is it can dry out. In fact, your fascia is drying out now. It's drying out from when you are born, and it will continue to dry out until you die. In fact, if we look at the fascia, the connective tissue, from different people at different ages, we will find that as you get older, the water content within that fascia becomes less and less and less. When you are born, your fascia is going to have around about 85 to 90 percent water content. By the time you are in your 60s, 70s, or even 80s, that water content is going to be down to 65%. I am in the middle there somewhere. I am 39 years old. So my fascia is going to be approximately 75% of water. Now, the other 25% is made up of proteins, collagen, elastin, and all of the other proteins that we have in the human body. Those different proteins join together in different ratios in order to make the different structures. So if the body needs to make a thick, strong tendon, it will take more collagen. If it needs to make um, a muscle, it will take less collagen, more elastin. If it needs a ligament, it will take even less elastin, more collagen and it puts those different materials together, those different proteins together, plus water, in order to build the different products. Now, as you get older, the water content within your fascia dries out. You will get wrinkles on the skin. The muscles in your eyes stop to work as well. You lose visual acuity. So gradually, as we get older, our fascia is drying out. Now, your fascia will also dry out if you overtrain. And this is where I question the hashtag yoga every day. I would say every day but one is better. So let's go for calorie, sorry, hashtag calorie every day but one. Because that day off, that day's rest, and in fact it needs to be, according to research, 36 hours rest. That 36 hours rest gives your body a chance to rehydrate. You can use the analogy of when you go to the edge of the sand next to the sea, where the waves are just coming in and you put your foot onto that hard sand and you push down into the sand. And what you will find is the water comes out 
and sits in a pool around the foot. Now, when you remove your foot, that water will be reabsorbed back into the sand. And that is the effect of rest. You take away the effort, you remove the foot, the water goes back into the sand. Or in our case, we give rest to the body, the water is reabsorbed into the fascia, and the fascia becomes more hydrated. If instead you train every day and you don't give that day's rest, your fascia does not have a chance to reabsorb and you progress towards this point of 65% hydration much, much quicker. So it is therefore very important to rest. The other thing that there is some evidence for to say it will help to keep the fascia hydrated, and this is important to keep it lubricated and to keep it as a flexible structure, is to vary the practice. So from day to day, make small changes in your practice. Now, as we move through the course, as we add more techniques, I will provide uh, some guidelines for this variation for you. So some days you can focus more on some exercises, other days on other exercises. At this early stage, whilst we're just learning the techniques, we will carry on with the repetition. Okay? So it's very important you take that day's rest because that will be the opportunity for the fascia to take water back in. Now, the third, the third function that I'd like us to consider is communication. If we look back at our fruit, we can see that within each of these segments, which are able to move against each other, within each segment we have sugars and we have water. Yeah? The sugars make the, the fruit sweet and the water make it juicy. So we need to have both of those things to make a good piece of fruit. Now the water and the sugars, believe it or not, they go into the segment through the pith. So the pith provides a transport system. And if we look at the fascia in the human body under a microscope, you can see water moving through these branches. So another video you could have a look at, if you type it in fascia, 25 times. If you just type that in to Google, you will see a very nice film where you look into the arm and you can see this fascial web, you can see this spider's web, and you can see held within this web are all of the different structures. So you have fat cells held in there, you have the ligament held in there, you have the nerve fiber and the blood vessels held in there. So when you go out into the cold and your fascia constricts, it closes down the blood vessel, reducing blood flow. When you go back into the warm, the fascia relaxes, opens up, again the blood flow goes, uh, again blood flows through um, the blood vessel uh, unimpeded. So the fascia is a responsive system in that way. So the fascia communicates water. It communicates nutrients. According to research, it could also be the way in which cancer metastasizes through the body because it provides a channel, a way for um, materials to move through the body. Recent research, and we're talking about uh, research that was done in February last year, and I will, I will add on to the forum um, these, these research papers. Research done in February last year showed us that they had found fascia, connective tissue, throughout the whole body. In fact, they hadn't found it previously because when they had done, uh, when they had taken biopsies, They'd taken them from a dried uh, body. They'd allowed the body, the fascia, to dry out. And when it dries out, it closes down and collapses, and you cannot see these water-filled spaces. But in February last year, they took biopsies that were frozen, and they looked at them under the microscope whilst still frozen. And so these spaces containing the water had not dried out, and they could see very clearly that you had, that you had a series of water-filled spaces, and these water-filled spaces were surrounded by a collagen structure. And that collagen structure uh, um, had within it also a lymphatic system. So out from each of these water spaces, drainage happened and was possible into the lymph system, which went off to a lymph gland taking away the waste products. So this new research, what they did, they looked throughout the whole body, they looked in many different areas, under the skin, 
they looked within the muscle, they looked within the different organs, and they found this fascia to be present in all of those places. Now, if we come back to the work of Thomas Myers, there was one more step in his work. So as well as finding these lines, and we've already looked at the front line, the back line, the deep front line, but there are also lines down the side of the body and lines twisting around the body to allow us to twist and to laterally flex, as well as arms, lines running down the arms, which give us a large amount of movement in the arm. As well as the fascia forming lines through the body, it forms fascial bags. So each one of your organs is wrapped within something like a cloth bag, but the, the cloth is obviously the, the connective tissue. So the connective tissue wraps around the organ and then attaches the organ into the body. In the case of the lungs, it attaches, it fuses into actually the deep front line. In the case of the kidneys, they fuse towards attaching into the back, which is why when you have kidney pain, you feel some pain here in the back, because this fascial bag becomes affected by the way in which the organ is functioning. So if there's a problem in the organ, it will affect the tension within the bag, and that bag will then pull on a certain part of the body and you feel the pain. So this is the kind of theory, if you like, behind fascia as to why it causes, um, why we get referred pain from the organs into the body. So this work was done by Thomas Myers and it was done initially uh, as an exploration of trying to understand the way the lungs were working. He was principally interested in the fascial banging of the lungs, but then he went on and looked at the other bodies, sorry, the other organs. So, so what we have then with fascia is a system that not only gives lines of continuity through the body, and we've looked at the first of those lines, but it also gives this bagging of the organs. And in fact, every structure within the body is essentially bagged in this fascia. And those fascial bags all connect to each other. So there is a continuity um, through the body of tension. In that sense, um, we can say that biomechanically, the body is one system and it self-regulates stress. So if there's stress and damage to the ankle, like we said before, that stress will pass through to the knee if it's not corrected. And then it will pass on to the hip and to the other hip and to the other knee or to the other shoulder and so on and so on. And the problem moves around the body. It also moves around the body because of the liquid nature of the fascia. So because the fascia is made up of so much water, the way in which a water beha a fluid behaves when it's in uh, motion means that the, the tension passes through this uh, matrix, if you like, and passes into other areas. So what we have in calorie then is a system to maintain health in this fascia. So long as we take regular rest and we vary the exercise that we are doing, the exercises in calorie maintain length, strength, an appropriate amount of tone within these fascial lines and allow these fascial bags to mobilize and to move freely. Okay, so we'll leave it there for today. Uh, we will carry on a bit more with fascia in the next class and we will look at the other lines uh, on top of those um, front and back and deep front lines. We will look at the lines in the side of the body which are giving us rotation and lateral flexion. We will then look at the arms which are, sorry, the lines which are running in the arms which give us mobility and a huge amount of dexterity in the upper limb which we obviously need to uh, interact with the world around us. Great, so I hope you're finding this interesting. I hope it's not too overwhelming. If there's anything that you're not sure on, please put it into writing for me. Either you can send it to me as a private message, or you can put it onto the forum if you think others will, will benefit from the, hearing the question. And I will return to these questions in the future classes, and gradually I can answer all of the questions that you have coming up, okay? It's a big subject, and I'm trying to find a way into it which is uh, manageable, uh, so please stop me if I've gone too far and, and I'll have to reiterate any areas that are not clear. Great, okay, so until then, uh, keep training, keep practicing, and uh, see you next time.